Abusing modus tollens, otherwise known as all swans are not black. So in logic, we have a structure called the modus ponens, and this is probably the most uh, famous or the most common of all logical structures. We have a hypothesis, if P, then Q, which basically means that if P is true, it follows that Q is true, okay? It's pretty straightforward. Here's an example. If the doorbell rings, little Rex will start barking. The doorbell rings, Rex starts barking. All right, that should make perfect sense. So what is the opposite of modus uh, ponens? The opposite is called modus tollens. And it's literally from the Latin, uh, the mood that denies. So let's uh, take a look at the logical structure. We start off with the same hypothesis, if P, then Q, but then we work at it backwards. We, we state that if Q is not true, that leads us to the conclusion that P is not true. And again, let's do our example with little Rex. If the doorbell rings, little Rex will start barking. But Rex is not barking, we can conclude the doorbell has not rung. Again, this is very straightforward, logically consistent. Um, now, what's the flat Earth argument? The hypothesis is that if the Earth is a sphere with radius 3,959 miles, the distance to the horizon in miles can be estimated with the formula 1.22 times the square root of h, where h is the eye height in feet. But under certain conditions, the horizon is further than predicted by the formula. Therefore, the Earth is not a sphere with radius 3,959 miles. Again, very logically consistent. So let's take a look at where some of these numbers come from. So in Wikipedia, they've got a nice uh, derivation, uh, just using the, the data for a globe Earth. And technically, you know, geometrically, uh, the horizon should be 1.22 times the square root of h uh, in miles, where h is in feet. All right, so the question is, is there evidence? So this is the world famous black swan image. And the viewer is uh, very low, um, just one foot, one foot above the water, which means that the distance, the estimated distance to the horizon is 1.22 miles. And not only is the far platform um, uh, in front of the horizon, um, but the, but the near platform as well. So the horizon is clearly, you know, over 10 miles away f based on this image. All right. So it would appear to be a slam dunk for the flat Earth. So let's take a look at the the structure of the modus tollens and let's examine uh, this this conclusion in yellow. So is this a guaranteed conclusion, 100% true, etched in stone? And the answer is no. Using this logical structure, what's in yellow is simply called the inference. Now, what does an inference mean? It's a logical conclusion based on evidence and reasoning. Okay, so in this logical structure known as modus tollens, uh, this thing in yellow is simply an inference. It just logically follows. Okay, but it is not guaranteed by any stretch of the imagination. Let's go back to the little Rex example. If the doorbell rings, little Rex will start barking, but Rex is not barking, so we can infer we can infer that the doorbell has not rung. So let's do, a, let's do a scenario. You ring the doorbell, but we don't hear Rex barking. Hmm, something is amiss. Well, it could be that Rex is actually not home. Rex might be at doggy daycare. Or Rex is home, but he's recovering from anesthesia. So there's a couple possibilities of why Rex is not barking, even though we had that logical structure. All right. So it turns out that there's some unstated assumptions. If the doorbell rings and Rex is at home, awake, alert, and not recovering from anesthesia, then he'll start barking. Okay. So now the log the structure holds because we have to address these unstated assumptions. So in the flat Earth case, what are some of the unstated assumptions behind that formula? Well, the formula is derived from a featureless sphere, not even an oblate spheroid. Not only that, but it assumes that there is no atmospheric refraction. So again, we can restate the modus tollens for the flat earth argument, but let's include the unstated assumptions. If the earth is a sphere with radius 3,959 miles and there's no atmospheric refraction, then the distance and horizon can be estimated with that formula. All right. So the, then the question is, being that we've addressed the unstated assumption, then is there refraction in this image? So fortunately, uh, the YouTube uh, photographer BMLSB69 has taken many, many more 
uh, photos and images and video from this exact same location, one foot above the water, um, using the same camera, same setup, uh, just on different days, right? So the top image, um, which we can call flat swan, the platform habitat is looking pretty flat. Uh, the middle image, where there doesn't really seem to be any distortion. And then the bottom image, which is the black swan. All right. So it, it does indicate that there is uh, significant distortion and refraction going on in that bottom image. And one of the things about atmospheric refraction is that it bends light rays downwards. So let's take a look at these two platforms. The, the image in the middle uh, shows very little distortion. The image at the bottom is the black swan image. And if atmospheric refraction bends light downward, that means distant objects appear higher than they actually are. In other words, their apparent image is higher than their actual geometric um, location. So if you take a look at this uh, horizontal line, it's just an arbitrary horizontal line that I drew with yellow and green. And then I redrew those two lines, the yellow and green, matching up to the on, onto the lower image. We clearly see that the black swan platform, platform habitat, is clearly higher up, like by about 30 feet, um, compared to where it was previously. All right, and this is a, a clear indication of of atmospheric refraction. All right, well, let's switch this thing around. Let's take a look at modus tollens from the globe Earth side. So, what would be the globe Earth argument for uh, using modus tollens? If the Earth is flat, distant objects like mountains, city skylines, and oil platforms will never be obstructed bottom up by the horizon. But distant objects are obstructed bottom up by the horizon. Therefore, the Earth is not flat. Okay. But are there flaws in this uh, in this reasoning? Well, first off, let's take a look at the logic behind it. Um, here we have. Uh, just a CGI version of an infinite plane. An infinite plane does not actually exist in the real world. So, you know, you could program the computer to, to kind of graphically represent it. And there's a couple different ways of doing it using different pieces of software. Here's a, actually a piece of clip art, um, a stock photo from um, uh, of an infinite plane. Now, what if we take our infinite plane and we just imagine, imagine some uh, objects on it? So you can kind of logically imagine if those objects, even if they're really far away, you can imagine that they they wouldn't be obstructed bottom up. So that that is a logical a logical statement. All right. And if you use the uh, Earth curve calf, Earth curve calculator, uh, it does predict that we'd have um, about 37 feet of platform habitat would be obstructed. And if we take a look at the actual image um, using the you know the dimensions of the oil platform, we find that it, it's actually about 30 feet is obstructed in this in this image. All right, so again, it, it looks like it's logically, you know, it logically holds, but there were those unstated assumptions. So what, what might uh, the flat earth response be? So there is something called a visual compression. So when you take a look at, for example, the first four telephone poles in this image, those first, those four telephone poles, they look like they're the same height, um, you know, and, 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 but they're actually about 60, 100 feet apart. Um, I mean, whatever the distance of telephone poles is, they're clearly not not sitting like right next to each other, but it's because we're using a telephoto lens that it just sort of compresses those. And then, of course, there's uh, the various ways that the, the eye works. So you could talk about how images are formed using the human eye. And you can also talk about the rules of linear perspective with the vanishing point and the horizon line, et cetera. All right. So it turns out that there are some unstated assumptions um, for, for this version of the Bodus Tolens. If the Earth is flat, and you don't consider the effects of perspective and the way our eyes work and compression, well, then you might not have things obstructed bottom up. Okay, so is the bottom image, the black swan image, is that a slam dunk for the flat earth? Is the middle image uh, a slam dunk for the globe? Um, so my father had a funny saying, uh, may he rest in peace, he was a great dad, but he had a, a funny little saying, uh, for every expert, there is an equal and opposite expert. So in conclusion, I would just like to say, please don't abuse modus tollens. And as always, your comments are welcome. So if you do leave a comment under this video, and especially if you engage other people and they're also leaving comments, uh, please, uh, please be kind to each other. Uh, thank you so much. Bye-bye.